began with a newspaper article of a woman who was uh, evicted from her house for failure to pay back taxes. She said she didn't know. She, the house was repossessed. Uh, they evicted her, sold it off, and then discovered they had the wrong house. This happens a lot. It was a computer snafu. Um, yet, the man who bought it in a fair and square legal auction was under no legal pressure to buy it back or to sell it back. And he wasn't sure he wanted to in this real article. And I saw that the man's name was Arabic, and it wasn't Persian. But earlier in my life, I'd known a Persian man uh, who was a colonel in the Shah's Air Force who found himself in the United States working 16-hour days in menial jobs. He was working in a gas station for the first eight hours and then in a shoe factory. And um, he said to me once he, you know, that he used to work with kings and queens and presidents and vice presidents uh, of entire countries by himself. And now he serves candy and cigarettes to kids who don't even know who I am, he said. And uh, I never forgot it. And so when I saw that Middle Eastern name in that newspaper article about that woman's house, I, I began to wonder, well, what if my colonel bought that house? And that began the book. You see, I mean, for me, the, the whole fuel for writing fiction is, is curiosity. It's not, it's not what I know, but what I don't know. And, and that's what drives, that's what actually, what doesn't drive me, it actually pulls me into story writing. You know what, it was actually, um, uh, I was, it was the first writing class I'd ever taught. I didn't even have a writing degree, and I was trying to get 22, 18-year-olds started. And I said, hey, look, look, look at the newspaper. There's some good stuff in here. And then I pointed to that story and read it out loud to them. I said, one of you guys should write about this. But no one took me up on it, thank God, because I cut it out and I, I, I did it. I try not to think too much in the first drafts of writing a novel. I tried to do what the, the writer Richard Bausch encouraged. Richard Bausch had a great line. He said, if you think that you are thinking when you're writing, think again. You're much closer to the dreaming side of your brain. So I try to dream it through, and, and, and I try to write as truly as I possibly can. And I found over the years that if you just do that, you'll end up saying something you didn't know you were trying to say or that the novel or the story was trying to say. One of the things that I came away with from writing House of Sand and Fog is that it's so easy to misbehave in this world. You know, it's so, you know, when we're up against it, uh, it's, it's really hard to do the right thing. I really think maybe the saints among us are the ones who, who are suffering in some way financially, health-wise, whatever, and yet they're still loving people. I think a lot of us tend to be, when we're up against it, not as loving as we could be. In fact, I think we, we misbehave quite a bit. Another thing that I think is in that novel, House of Sand and Fog, is this notion that um, it's awfully easy to assume we know the other and when we don't. And I think that assumption, that prejudging, uh, leads to all sorts of conflict. Well, um, that novel, House of Sand and Fog, got a lot of calls from the film world. Uh, my agent got over 140 calls in a year and a half. And every now and then he would forward to me somebody he thought uh, might have a shot at making the movie and anyway, all those conversations, Sean, ended the same way. They would say some nice things about the drama, blah, blah, blah. Then they'd say, but we have to soften the ending. And they almost always used that verb. And I said, well, what do you mean soften the ending? He said, well, you know, it's a downer. I said, well, yeah, it's a tragedy. They're, they're downers. Um, and I would politely hang up. And then one day I got a call from this uh, Ukrainian man, Vadim Perlman, who hadn't made a feature film, but he had some backing. And... Um, my agent had a feeling about him. We had a really good talk, and, uh, and towards the end of it, he said, you know, listen, some, some big Hollywood person may give you a lot of money and make your book into a film. But this, he, this, these were his, his exact words. He said, but they're going to take your baby, they're going to chain it to the radiator, and they're going to rape and kill it. And uh, I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, I'm not going to hurt your baby. You wrote a dark book. I'm going to make a dark film. It'll be in art houses, and no one's going to go see it. I said, well, you're my man. <laughs> I gave him the option that day. Um, so he kept me in the loop more than, you know, fiction writers are normally kept in the loop. And, uh, and I, I, I'm ultimately very pleased with what he did. I think it's very loyal to 
the feeling of the book. I was particularly pleased to see that he was really respectful of the Iranian family. Um, as you know, I mean, that, this has been changing the last 10 or 15 years, but Middle Eastern people tend to be put into two or three types, and he didn't do that, which was gratifying for me to see.